Okay. Howdy, 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 howdy. As the title suggests, this is me just talking for a change as opposed to doing uh, some active music stuff. Um, my subject is self-promotion and exposure. They're kind of two sides of the same coin. You know, because as an independent musician, it's you're not backed by uh, a large marketing entity. Um, that's what the labels will do for uh, for an artist is they have connections, they have ends, they have all kinds of different stuff that's available to support an artist so that the artist can focus on their music. I have been very adamant about not wanting to to sign away my rights. Uh, to have full control over what I do. Uh, and even if that means that I have to either pay out of my own pocket or do all the management myself. Um, because I, I just can't see myself giving away rights in this modern day and age, the way things work. Uh, licensing is different. Being able to control where, when, and how my stuff is used, um, that's a big deal. But getting out to the world and sharing music is the point of my making music. I do it because I enjoy it, but I don't do it just so I can put a notch up over my bedpost and say, hey, look at the new thing that I did for me, and then just tuck it away. I want to be proud of what I do. Uh, I want to have quality. I want to have quantity. And I don't want to... You know, I don't want to look back if I have to ever stop and say that I didn't give it my all. Um, I think a lot of people could feel the same way that um, even when they sign to a label, you know, they go into it with the best of intentions. I know I would have at one point in my life, but uh, I had a lot of influences that said not to. So the point of the self-promotion and exposure discussion is two sides. So self-promotion is how do, <laughs> how does an independent make, you know, carve out that little space? And to me, it's pretty much, you know, Number one is branding. As you can see, I've got my my approach to this kind of thing. I've made my own t-shirts, right? I've made my own posters. You know, I'll go up and put up my own posters. Um, you know, t-shirts, it's kind of a fun thing. This is in, uh, this is normal iron-on paper sprayed with uh, glow-in-the-dark stuff. So when you do iron it on, it will glow in the dark. As you can see, they don't really last that well if you wash them like normal clothes. But, you know, it's a self self promotion to exposure. Always have merch to sell when the opportunity shows up or to give out. Uh, there are some friends and, and stuff like that that you know, they have these shirts and they hold on to them. You know, it's kind of a memory piece. And then comes the more practical point of self exposure just in the day to day life. You know, making CDs, being able to put my own label on it that looks better than just writing on it with a, a Sharpie marker. Um, you know, and they take different forms. Try and do something a little different with each one of them. Because uh, I had an opportunity once where I ran into DMX, of all people, just after he, uh, the day after he'd performed locally. And <laughs> I didn't have anything to give him. And uh, I, I decided for myself that I wasn't ever going to get caught out like that again. And so uh, anytime I do business with somebody, like if I buy a guitar or if I, you know, I'm just at a music store or something like that, I'll tend to drop one off. You know, it's, it's money out of my own pocket. It's time that I take to put together. But it's my budget. It's what I have to work with. Like the poster kind of things, they're pretty simple. It's just... Uh, a large 11 by 17 you can make them at Kinko's you know that kind of thing but putting the time and effort in on Photoshop or not I don't have Photoshop sorry uh, PowerPoint paint um, and I've got the little QR codes which actually work I'm pretty sure a lot of people aren't into using QR codes it's kind of a spammy sort of thing I mean uh, to to have them but they do work if, if somebody walks up and says well I, I don't want to type in all this stuff you know gotta make it easy for people uh, and that's goes back to having the CDs or or that kind of thing that in in re, real day-to-day -day life people are not going to spend a lot of time 
uh, being advertised to, being sold to. It just, I mean, put, put myself in their shoes. So that comes back uh, or feeds into the subject of exposure. So self-promotion and exposure. Um, the self-promotion part means covering as much territory as possible, but also the exposure part is choosing the right ways to get out there. So there's SoundCloud, right? You're watching through Periscope. Um, I just signed up for Twitch and just kind of did a test a little bit earlier. And then there's even more. There's DistroKid so I can get into digital album sales into Spotify. Uh, in, I've been trying recently to submit to Pandora because they have their own system for independent artists not signed to a label where they review it. And then they'll say, yep, or nope. And then they won't tell you why. Um, so it's just a matter of making sure that whatever's submitted is going to fit in the category and go through it because Pandora and Spotify and those kind of things are, and YouTube are used all the time by, di by different groups of people that I don't, I don't have any chance to meet somebody in Sweden that might be interested in what I do. But thanks to DistroKid and Spotify, I've been able to see where my music gets played, who, who listens to it, and, you know, either you click a link through my Twitter account or you see what's going on and you just kind of, I want to check out some more of this stuff. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to buy it right now. I don't feel like buying it ever. You know, I don't buy music anymore. Well, I want to get some exposure out there. I want people to enjoy what I've been doing. So I'll put it on Spotify. And that's the nice exchange is that, yeah, <laughs> I can't, I can't even buy gas for my car with what I make from Spotify. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't really pay. It's exposure. But at least there's that principle, the general principle of trying to pay me for the fact that I've given them something to work with so that they have a model. That is something I can be, you know, kind of okay with. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to pay my bills off of the music. I'm waiting for the music to catch enough people that it hits critical mass where I have my rights and I'm able to dictate, you know, is it going to be used in a commercial? Can it be used in a video game? Can it be used in a movie soundtrack? And all of those outlets are very important. Those aren't necessarily as much exposure or self-promotion. Those are genuine income streams. Um, and it takes a while to get there. It takes a lot of luck. I mean, I'll just be straight up honest that without the backing of a label or the placement and the connections, it's really a very bleak prospect. You know, um, nobody's going to get rich making, nobody really does get rich making music. It's very exclusive. It's the 1%. You either end up like Dead Mouse for $150 million off of doing the same 4 4 beat and doing the same bleep bleep blonk and then you know, getting that fan base that will do anything for you. Or it's kind of like struggling in the shadows. And that's why I love the, the story of churches. And this is just a little side real quick about self-promotion is that they knew by doing what they wanted to do with their first stuff and putting it up on SoundCloud. That's why I see Martin. He always wears that SoundCloud hat. And he has for the longest time. It got a chance, it got some traction with some music reviewers and blogs that people were able to find what they liked. And it had merit, and from there, their career got to take off. And they totally deserved it because, you know, being an overnight success, you can, if the label gives you, here's, here's, here's a hookup for Max Martin, here's some studio time, and we're gonna get you played on the radio that's great if that's the ticket you know what at the end of the day just go look at like walk a flock of flame right now who's in totally dogging on atlantic records because they've been stalling his album management has changed because he doesn't own the rights to his stuff and they can make you and they can break you <laughs> and that's that's tough i mean but that's the deal that is the deal so self-promotion and the idea of playing for exposure or doing stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there now, like on Twitter and SoundCloud even, where people, you know, I, I have paid for plays in the past through different stuff like Music X-Ray or Django or something. Not a lot of money because I don't have a lot of money to spend on it. But 
it felt like it was worth giving it a try. And that's what this whole thing with Twitch just recently was. Is I have to try it out to figure out if it's something that's worth doing. Um, and compared to what I'm able to do now, just set this up, hit go, have something to do. That's different. You know, just uh, exposure does count for something. Is it going to pay the bills? No. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's nobody else that could take it away. You know, there's nobody that owns my catalog that can sell it behind my back. Uh, somebody does decide to try and, you know, bite a piece off and, as Drake might say, use it as a reference track. Nope. I'm beyond that. I don't have all my rights lined up. Because the reason I do this is to do it the way I want to do it. And, um, and that's pretty cool, in my opinion. I mean, just making the deal. Uh, with yourself first, and then giving it out to the world as uh, as able. You know, like I said, if it all falls down tomorrow, you know, knock on wood that it doesn't. But uh, at least I've I've produced something. You know, I've got an archive. I've got I've got enough albums on iTunes and stuff like that. That if I never ever touch it again, you know, five years from now, if I turn it off and I don't have a choice. Stuff will keep dri trickling in, trickling in, trickling in until it, you know, if anything, if it makes people happy to listen to something that I've done. That's, that's, that's why I was a music fan in the first place, because music made me feel good. So, that's pretty much the long and short of it. And also, I will say too, self-promotion. I love any ball guitar strings. I play the crap out of them. I'm going to promote myself as an artist, whether, they, <laughs> whether they're endorsing me or not. It'd be nice if I could at least cover some of the, uh, the you know, 10 bucks a month that it costs to keep my guitars in strings that I can keep doing music. Spotify doesn't pay me that much. iTunes doesn't pay me that much. Google, Tidal, all, any name that you want to cite, it doesn't matter. They don't, they don't pay. It's, it's the deal with the exposure. Which is different than having McDonald's or like Oprah or somebody ask you to play for free. You know, they, they, oh, we don't have it in the budget. Well, they're going to find somebody who will do it for free. You know, they will. Because we're all hungry out here. As an independent musician who really wants to make a living doing this, if you don't have a day job, you don't have a music job. Because you can't keep... You can't, if you can't eat and you don't have a place to sleep, then, you know, you're going to have a lot of material to write songs about, but I can't guarantee you that anybody's still going to listen after all of that, you know? I mean, that's, that's the tough realization about this stuff. Um, but I'd like to say, go out there, go hard, go hustle, find as many spots as you can get into that you, you fit in. You know, that you know you belong. If you're, if you're on, if you're a DJ, do Mixcloud. You don't belong on SoundCloud. SoundCloud is for people who are making music themselves. They're not for people who are mixing stuff and calling it new and original. It, that's, th those are two incompatible things. You want to make videos and like produce them and stuff like that, then put it on YouTube. You want to reach out and talk to people just because it's a, it's a nice avenue, try Periscope. I've, I've been having a lot of fun doing it. I mean, I, I can't help but say it. It's just fun to be able to have a chance to reach out and touch people. It's like an open mic night where I don't have any control over who's watching, how many people are in here. Nobody has to buy a drink. You know, you didn't have to get in your car and drive here to see what I'm trying to do. And sometimes it's more professional than others. If I'm sitting here talking or if I'm playing acoustic late at night, or if I'm in there jamming with some great tracks that I just bought off B-Port and I got my whole rig just blasting on a Sunday afternoon. <sighs> Am I promoting myself? I don't know. I mean, it's half just doing what I do. It's half promoting. It's half exposure. It's just there's something to technology as a way to get stuff together and to get it out there. That's just really cool. So... You know, don't don't shy away from taking some control yourself to try it at least and just straight up don't expect anything out of it. You know, I really don't. Um, 
It's what's called the echo chamber. You can shout as loud as you want. And there's no guarantees anybody's there to listen. It's like playing in your bedroom, right? Except now the internet's your bedroom. <laughs> so don't do anything stupid that you don't want on the internet. Because it'll last forever. <laughs> anyway, everybody, I'm going to put this on YouTube later. Uh, just to kind of be an MO of what I do, why I do it. And um, I appreciate everybody who just keeps keeps following me because I'm going to keep grinding, just keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, keep having fun. If not, there's no reason to, you know, there's no reason to make this a, a chore or something that I don't like doing because it kind of be counterproductive. So, happy Halloween, everybody. Stay safe out there. If you're in a different country where you don't celebrate Halloween, you don't deal with Dia de los Muertos, all that stuff. Hey, you know, we all have our celebrations and our way of doing stuff. So, Texas, Texas, I'll definitely catch y'all later. Peace.